Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of uh, Sam Blind Plays Games, um, a video series in which I uh, blind play games. So, if there is any uh, contentious content within this video, there will be a trigger warning posted at the uh, very beginning, so don't worry about that. Um, so the premise of Sam Blind Plays Games is uh, people tell me a game to play. I don't look at any of the details. I pick up a copy of the game and I play it on stream. Or on camera, I mean. Not on stream, I don't stream. So um, if this turns out to be the first part of a Firewatch series, no spoilers please. I have no idea what this game's about. I don't even know the premise. I don't know what type of game it is. I know nothing. I've never even seen a screenshot. Boulder, huh? Boulder, Colorado. You see Julia. I don't see anything right now. Oh. She's about my age, late 20s. Laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. Probably like Colorado University. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. So my name is Henry today. I approach her. I am drunk. So what's your, you know, major? Hmm. You slur the word major and it smells like coarse. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours? She asks, sniffing the air. Toxicology? No, wait, that's my response. Toxicology? No, wait. No, she said, she said that. Okay. Was that a burn? I ask. She says, definitely. Worries she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Okay. So it's not some sort of text-based visual novel. So I pick up my backpack. I put on my backpack. Loading up my backpack, I guess. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia's in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Oh, my first real choice, huh? She loves the beagle, but I feel as though the Shepherd can protect her. You know what? Hmm. I want to prioritize Julia here. So even though I prefer German Shepherds, I'm going to pick the Beagle and name and she will name him Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 
1979. You talk out on the deck, it's summer. 9.30 p.m. and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple of little idiots. One day. Why rush? She looks out. She looks away out towards the mountains. We have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. Ooh, spicy. I wonder what the situation is here. Don't worry, you assure her. You tell her she has the body of an undergrad. My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says, laughing it off. One day, okay? Okay, one day. Six months later, you get engaged lying in bed on a Sunday morning. <sighs> Let's put on the hat. A map here, two forks with a region overview. Where am I? It does not appear to say. Don't forget to check in, no fireworks, you're in their country, learn to live with bears, and thoroughfare trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Thoroughfare is a prime is a primitive backcountry trail. This trail may be vague along several stretches, and disappears entirely at some at some points. If it, it has many confusing side paths, locating the trail may be more difficult than expected, and it is common for novice hikers to find themselves stranded at night without water. Make a plan. Be prepared. Let's go down the trail. It's a beautiful trail, isn't it? However, I'm worried. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk when she, or she's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Rather than getting mad, you ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee, and you go to work. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all of the places you go. She draws you. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Very nice. I'm along the trail. It's becoming evening. It will soon begin to grow dark. The shadows already become long. And the sunset is a beautiful sight. Two forks look out the tower. Eight more miles still. Let's climb over this log. 1982. During the summer as you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town that brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked.
but, 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 fuck! D dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. And you scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare... Or, you manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Either convince her not to take the job or agree if she commutes back and forth, but such a commute is unreasonable to make. And yet, can I afford to convince her not to take the job of her dreams? It is better for both of us if she does not take this job, and yet, at the same time, I do not seek to break Julia's heart. I'm getting really into this game, wow. This is fun. I'm going to convince... I'm going to convince her not to take the job. You tell her that this means you two won't have a family. She says that's bullshit. She's totally right. She says if her taking this job mean she asks if her taking this job means you won't come with her. You say yes. Again, bullshit. But she decides not to take it. 1985, Julia is asked to leave Boulder on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for, bo for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember that she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You see that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Bucket is getting older, and Julia comments that it's kind of nice because it gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to university. Julia's of 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class and her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse he suggests that Julia could live somewhere else. Somewhere with 24-hour care. A home. It sits with you for a couple months. And so... Rather than deciding to move her into a full-time care facility, you are determined to take care of her by yourself because you love her and you cannot bear to be separated from her. I want to go back along the trail. I cannot go back along the trail. I'm 
Give me a yellow. Beautiful, isn't it? It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her when she like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter. Drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door. You go to the same bar the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1am a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night you were stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point ten and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia, and they can't believe the state your house is in. They then tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Back in the woods, the lookout tower ahead of me. Now, a quest before me. Enter the lookout tower. What is happening here? I do not know. Is this my job? Did, have all of those event, were all of those events flashbacks leading back up to this point? Turn on the power. I guess it's a tower. I guess it's a cozy enough place. I've got a little bed here. A book. Tower, this is thoroughfare tower. Come in. I know you're there. Your lights are on. what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then, can I sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Okay, um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids by the sound of your voice at least 15 years ago. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? Well, she also says I fuck immature men, but in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Me, I'm going now. <laughs> just a second, now it's my turn. Fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Firewatch. Day one. So all of that was prologue. on the shelves, but okay. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, 6? 
five. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We go. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is this West? Are those fucking fireworks? Let's let's go outside to get a better look. I can't go outside to I get a better look. <laughs> no. What? It's not a cop. It's not like I've got a rule book over here. Just make sure they don't do it again. Take their shit. All right, fine. Don't feed anyone a knuckle sandwich. Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is one two three four. It's actually that for all of them. Three oh six. Okay, so that's northwest of my position. So my heading appears to be correct. Let's try and catch the trail. So now I just follow the trail for a little bit. Very interesting because the game seems to have followed a different genre than uh, prior. Hmm. Try and shimmy through here. I've got an overgrown trail here. Trail's getting really rough here. I don't even know if it is trail anymore. Is this the game's way of discouraging me? East. So are there a lot of these out in the woods? A note from Ron. Hey man, guy couldn't take it so I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked. Hiking into the park, but let's get fucked when I'm back. Dave. I'll keep it. 
let's take that old rope. People just stuff these things with old food. That's how you get bears. Those boxes are bear proof. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. So I just kind of have to trust my sense of direction. Oh my god, I can run. Beautiful sky. No. no! Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. Be careful for Christ's sake. Okay, so dark is approaching, and it is very easy to get lost along this trail. Color me officially scared. Where are those punk ass kids? I enjoy how it uses subtle level design to push you forward in a linear fashion without seeming linear. But they left their clothes out to dry. It looks like uh, two people. Uh, what if they're naked? The idiots down at the lake? Yeah, them. Just found where they're hanging out. I found a bra. A nudie pyromaniac. Remain professional. Uh, there are, uh, panties. There are what? I don't want to say that word again. Why, because you're 12? There's, a. Uh... Yes? There are two naked ladies out here. Can you handle that? Come on, I like... Same as anyone, but there's, you know. Two? Yeah. I know this will be tough for you, but try to pick your tongue up off the ground and do your job. Okay. 
anything about me. We know you're a peeping Tom. How long are you even standing over there? Oh my god, is that what you are? Work me out. Ew. Can we just get out of here? You're gross. You're just some sad man out in the woods. Growing dark. <sighs> Something about that gives me the weirdest sense of heartache, you know? Like, I don't know. I guess part of the problem is that I, you know, realized I was trans at only 18. No, set, no, almost 18. And, you know, I've been on hormones for only about a month now. Speaking of, those are going very well. I have a bit of a confession to make. What is it? Um, look, I was, I was drunk last night when I welcomed you to the job. Yeah, well, you're not the first boss to be guilty of that. I know, I just, I know I can get a little pushy and, you know, putting you on the spot about uh, why you're out here and stuff. And you thought it was a good idea to get into your um, love life, I guess you'd call it? Yeah. Um, anyway, you know, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I kind of feel like I missed out on a lot of standard I'll, I'll, I'll keep teen that sort moments. Of So there's a storm nearby. That's very much not good. I'm only a half mile away. Come on, come on. I can't get that lost, right? Fuck. Let's check the supply cache. Map update with some new info. Okay, I've got a flashlight. Yeah, I get the sense that not everything in here is useful. In the boxes? Why's that? I don't really know what I'll do with the deer horn. Firstly, they're called antlers, and secondly, stay out here long enough and you'll get creative. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon? Thunder Canyon? Hey, I didn't name it. But in the cave? I don't know, rocks? NFS tells people not to go too far in there, it's pretty dangerous. So... So, I say, fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. Great. I used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa! Oh, no! Henry! Seriously, it's completely fine in here. God damn it! So I've got this deer horn just because. Key available at Ranger Station, Dubois, Wyoming. Maybe I can use this fucking antler for something. This is a bad idea, but it's my only option right now. Come on, check the lo check the rocks, check the rocks, buddy. Oh. 
There's some guy out here giving me the creeps. The creeps? Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything else? I... I don't think so. Henry, there's... there's something I... Something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? It's... outside. Come on. The whole <laughs> thing, people come and go as they please. It's... it's... it's mad. Delilah. Yeah. So it looks like I have multiple paths ahead of me. I don't like this. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You got it, you got it, you got it. Here's it all looped over to here. That's okay though. I don't know a single thing about this game. So, um. I feel like these are gonna break. <laughs> I love I love the uh the banter between these two. So it's uh just the outhouse then in terms of going to the bathroom. You're a man, Henry. You can go wherever you want. Well, number one at least. And uh full disclosure, I pee wherever I want as well. That's nice, I guess. Yeah. Is there someone in here? Is the wind gonna blow over my tower? Will the 
catch whoever did it. This is the Forest Service, Henry. They're not exactly Hawaii Five-0. Do you have any idea who would have done this? I did probably piss off the girls at the lake. Ugh, fuck them. Well, I'll have the Rangers keep an eye out for a couple of young women and question any they find. I can't believe someone would do this. I worry about bears and fires, and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about some, what, violent campers? Heh, <laughs> don't tread on me, doormat. I like that. be sleeping that night. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I like I like Henry. I almost called him Hank. How long have I been recording by now? Forty-five minutes. Well, since we just started day two, I think that's a good time to end off my episode. What an episode it's been, honestly. I I I deeply enjoy this game. Uh, this is definitely getting an episode two. Um, tomorrow, tune in tomorrow for uh, either an episode two of this or an, or me starting on another game. Uh, but either way, this is getting an episode two. I hope every one of you has a wonderful night. And um, thank you very much for tuning in today. Let's double check my game saved. Bum, 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 bum. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Remember to take care of yourselves, get some sleep, and uh, just, you are loved. Have a good night.